This is Absite review for appendix and cecum. As always, let's start with anatomy. The appendix is located at the inferior cecum and is about 4 to 12 centimeters long. The arterial supply is the appendiceal artery, which is a branch of the iliocolic artery. The appendix can be located in a retrocecal position in about two-thirds of people. Appendicitis is the inflammation of the appendix. The most common symptoms of appendicitis are pain initially around the umbilicus, then it can migrate to the right lower quadrant to McBurney's point, which is one third of the way between the anterior superior iliac spine and the umbilicus. Pain usually precedes nausea. Patients usually don't want to eat. So if you ask a kid if they want a hamburger and they say no, that is sometimes called the hamburger sign. Always ask about diarrhea, which can occur with appendicitis, but could also be a clue to infectious colitis, which can sometimes also present with right lower quadrant pain, such as in Yersinia infections. Sometimes children will have large inflamed lymph nodes in the bowel mesentery called mesenteric adenitis that can mimic appendicitis and needs no treatment. The other named signs of appendicitis include Robsing sign, which is pain in the right lower quadrant with palpation of the left lower quadrant, right lower quadrant pain with coughing called Dunphy's sign, and pain with extension or internal rotation of the right leg known as the psoas sign. The Alvarado score takes all of these factors along with some lab findings to grade the likelihood of appendicitis. A ruptured appendix in a right inguinal hernia is called an amiant hernia. If an appendix is causing pain and then ruptures, the patient can actually feel better for a short while, then gradually get sick again. The most common location for a rupture is the anti-mesenteric appendix, about halfway down, as the blood supply is the worst here. The differential diagnosis for right lower quadrant pain in a woman is the mnemonic A rope. Appendicitis ruptured ovarian cyst, ovarian torsion, PID, endometriosis, and ectopic pregnancy. So also consider pelvic ultrasound and always do a pregnancy test in a woman of childbearing age. Appendicitis is diagnosed on ultrasound as a thick walled, over two millimeters thick, dilated over seven millimeter, non-compressible structure in the right lower quadrant. The most sensitive and specific test is a CT scan. Classic symptoms in a male may not need any imaging, although I think at least an ultrasound is not a bad idea because I've been fooled by terminal ileal Crohn's disease in the past. Appendectomy is generally still considered the best treatment for non-ruptured or recently ruptured appendicitis. Laparoscopic or open through McBurney's incision, muscle splitting in the right lower quadrant. If it's a ruptured appendix and you do a good abdominal washout, only continue the post-operative antibiotics for four days as per the STOP IT trial. Non-operative treatment with antibiotics alone, as studied in the landmark CODA, which stands for Comparison of Outcomes of Antibiotic Drugs and Appendectomy trial, can be considered in some early appendicitis, although 30% still needed surgery within a few months. Also know that a fecal lith or an appendical lith, which are calcified stool balls in the base of the appendix, immunosuppression, and peritoneal signs should be considered contraindications to trying non-operative treatment of acute appendicitis. I would also consider appendectomy more in the elderly population or if there was any evidence of a mass on imaging since cancer is more of a concern. A pregnant woman evaluation should start with an ultrasound, but the appendix can be hard to find, so they can also have a non-contrast MRI, which is good imaging for appendicitis. Ruptured appendicitis is a risk for fetal loss, so be careful in pregnant patients not to miss appendicitis. Because of the gravid uterus, the appendix can be near the right upper quadrant. Sometimes a supra-umbilical Hassan trocar is safer and all ports should be in the upper abdomen to stay away from the uterus. If you explore for right lower quadrant pain and the appendix is normal, 
check for terminal ileum Crohn's disease. Also, check for Meckel's diverticulum, which should be within two feet of the ileocecal valve, and check for GYN causes in a woman. If you find terminal ileum Crohn's disease that does not involve the cecum, then remove the appendix. If your Crohn's disease that involves the base of the appendix, but the appendix is normal, then leave the appendix since removal has a high rate of fistula. If there is a drainable abscess and the patient is otherwise stable, IR drainage and antibiotics is best. Don't do surgery right away. If there is a phlegmon without a drainable abscess, just antibiotics and no immediate surgery also. If you treat a ruptured appendix that has an abscess or a phlegmon non-operatively, you will need to decide if you will offer an interval appendectomy, usually in about six weeks. This is a divided issue. A safe answer is that anybody with imaging six weeks later showing a mass in the appendix should have it removed to rule out cancer. Older patients may want it removed also to rule out cancer. And certainly anybody over the age of 40 should at least have a barium enema or a colonoscopy to be sure the appendicitis is not related to malignancy. The trend is away from routine interval appendectomy in everybody, certainly. Appendiceal cancer is a common question. The appendix is one location you can find neuroendocrine or carcinoid tumors. The most common location for carcinoids is the ileum, but the appendix is the second most common location. If an appendiceal carcinoid tumor is less than two centimeters and is at the tip of the appendix, then appendectomy alone is sufficient. Appendiceal carcinoid over two centimeters at the tip of the appendix needs a right hemicolectomy. If appendiceal carcinoid of any size is at the base of the appendix, then you need a right hemicolectomy. Any adenocarcinoma of the appendix, no matter what size, gets a right hemicolectomy. Adenocarcinoid tumors of the appendix get a right hemicolectomy and adenocarcinoma of the terminal ileum gets a right hemicolectomy. A mucosal is a dilated appendix filled with mucin. These are not all malignant, but should be treated as possibly malignant until they are removed. The general term now is appendiceal mucinous neoplasm, or AMN, and they range from low grade to high grade. The following decision tree is generally recommended. If a mucosal is found on imaging, strongly consider a colonoscopy to look at the cecum and the base of the appendix for tumor. If there is no obvious tumor in colonoscopy, prepare for an appendectomy, but consent the patient for a possible right hemicolectomy. Appendectomy can be done laparoscopically, but you must be careful not to rupture the appendix. If you can't remove adhesions without risk of rupture, then do the appendectomy open. If the appendix is ruptured, even low-grade appendiceal mucinous neoplasms can cause diffuse mucin throughout the abdomen. This is known as pseudomyxoma peritonei, or PMP. If possible, take a little cecum with the appendix, especially if the base of the appendix is also dilated with mucin. Once you remove the appendix, if you can, you should send it for frozen section. If it is benign or a low-grade appendiceal mucinous neoplasm, which has not penetrated the muscularis propria, and if the margins are negative, and if the appendix is not dilated to more than two centimeters, then you can stop after appendectomy alone. But any higher grade appendiceal mucinous neoplasm or mucinous adenocarcinoma or if the appendix is dilated to more than two centimeters, then you should do a right hemicolectomy. If somebody gets pseudomyxoma peritonei, then the patient should be referred for debulking and heated intraperitoneal chemotherapy, or HIPEC. Tephlitis is inflammation of the cecum related to neutropenia. The classic presentation is a neutropenic patient with right lower quadrant pain and dilated inflamed cecum on the CT scan. You have to operate if they are septic or free air, but most tephlitis is treated with IV antibiotics and bowel rest. Patients with HIV 
can also get CMV colitis of the right colon with hemorrhagic ulcerated lesions of the mucosa. The pathognomonic finding is owl eye nuclear inclusions in colonocytes on endoscopic biopsy. Intussusception is common at the ileocecal valve. In children, it is commonly due to benign and large lymph nodes, so trying air contrast enema to reduce it and don't operate. In adults, however, there is usually a lead point that is malignant or will lead to recurrent episodes. So take ileocecal intussusception in adults to the OR for resection. Ogilvy's syndrome is also known as colonic pseudo-obstruction. Classic presentation is an elderly patient with electrolyte abnormalities or recent back surgery or retroperitoneal inflammation of some sort. It is thought to be caused by too much sympathetic tone. The cecum will be dilated typically about 8 to 10 centimeters and the patient will have right lower quadrant pain and bloating. Initial treatment is NG tube, bowel rest, and correcting any underlying electrolyte problems and minimizing narcotics. I would try and do a gentle gastrographic enema to rule out distal obstruction. If no distal obstruction and conservative measures are not working, try two milligrams of IV neostigmine, which increases parasympathetics and should make the colon contract and the patient have a big bowel movement. It can cause bradycardia though, so have atropine, half a milligram up to a milligram, IV ready to counteract this. Atropine will block the parasympathetic action on the heart. Don't use neostigmine if a patient has heart block. Neostigmine can be repeated, but probably only try it twice before moving on. Colono colonoscopic decompression is an option if neostigmine doesn't work, although minimal insufflation is used. Failure of these, dilation over 12 centimeters, peritoneal signs, or free air would be indications to operate for right colon resection and likely an ileostomy and a mucous fistula at that point. Cecal volvulus occurs in younger patients than sigmoid volvulus and is due to abnormal attachments of the right colon. Cecal volvulus is not treated with decompressive endoscopy. It requires surgery. The most safe surgery is a right hemicolectomy. Simple cecopexy is associated with high recurrence risk. Cecal bascule is when the cecum folds up and over on itself. Probably resection is the best to treat this, since it is common in younger women and you want to decrease future recurrence. Right side colon diverticula is unusual, but it is more commonly found in Asian populations. Sometimes actual diverticulitis of the cecum and or right colon can occur. This usually responds to conservative measures, but once resolving, you definitely need to do a colonoscopy to rule out cancer. Occasionally, an AVM, also known as angiodysplasia of the right colon, can be a source of GI bleed. A tagged RBC scan can pick up bleeding of 0.5 cc per minute or more. An angiogram needs bleeding of 1 cc per minute or more. If bleeding scans show a blush in the right colon, try an angiogram and embolization. Colonoscopy with injection or cautery may also work. If neither of these work and the bleeding continues, then do a, a right hemicolectomy or a subtotal colectomy if the source is unclear. That's it for appendix and cecum. There will be a separate talk on the rest of the colon. Hope that helped. Thanks.